Hi guys, this is GTG, New Generation to Gaming. I'm back here with a Black Ops 3 video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get Pack Punch by round 5. And with me is going to be Alex. He's going to be helping out with this video. And um, yeah, he's just going to be showing you how to get Pack, what to do. So I'd like to introduce and warm out the firm. Don't forget to like, subscribe, do whatever, I don't really mind. So warm welcome to Alex. Hey guys, it's Alex here for Team GTG, new, ne new generation to gaming. And I will be showing you how to get packed points by round 5 in Black Ops 3 Zombies. Alright, so step 1. First of all, you're going to want to pick up the fumigator in case you want to fumigate anything. But the main first thing you want to do is, is open the first door. You're then going to run over to this stone over here and try your best to run over here, zap this machine really quickly, run over, zap the crane and quickly turn around and use the grappling hook. Now here's a little trick, once you get up here, run, jump on top of this little ledge, then run, jump again onto this thing. It'll make things a lot quicker and then run around and zap the thing at the end. You're then we're going to want to run backwards and jump off the building. Then you're going to, going to smash this door and turn on the quick revive machine and then smash the gate key open. Alright, if you can't do that all in one shot, you can have another go at a different stone. Don't worry, it can be kind of tricky, but if you practice it well, you'll be able to get it. Maybe then you're going to want to pick up the key and then these gatekeepers are going to spawn, so just kill them. And also, while doing this tutorial, it'll be best if you wait for um, to get a double point inside that door over there that you smashed open. That'll be best. And if you do get the double points, don't use it. You're going to want to wait till round two. But um, yeah, all right. So then what you're going to do is you're going to kill these zombies, but leave one. Remember, um, three shoots to the stomach and then one knife is going to get your most maximum points. Make sure you keep one zombie. Then you're going to go pick up the gate key and you're going to run upstairs. You're going to go to the ritual room and you're going to start the ritual. Um, I would advise getting a quick revive and, and like a gun or something because, I don't know, sometimes the rituals can be a fail and you don't really want to fail in your ritual. And yeah, um, in this tutorial, like it's pack punch by round five. You can also get all the rituals done by round three if you uh, work well with your afterlife or your beast mode. Sorry, it's afterlife from Mob of the Dead, but beast mode in this map. But yeah, and if you work well with your beast modes, you're going to be able to get all the rituals done by round three, which is quite good to do because they can be a real pain and they can take forever. But as you see here, we get the whole thing, we get the whole thing packed punched all by 20 minutes, which means you have your game all set up in 20 minutes and you can play for as long as you want. Right, so next thing you want to do is you want to go end the round and build up some points because you want to want to go to the first district now. And um, I usually like to start to the, with the district that has the mystery box in it and then go for the one that has Jog second. How you tell is, of course, you look into the sky and see where the light is, and that's how you know where the mystery box is. The right and for the, the perk, if you notice outside East Dis people. District on like a little broken, there's like a little broken perk on this like, um, how do you explain it, like a little crate. And whatever coloured perk that is, that's what perks in the district, because they change around every time. The only perks that stay the same is Mule Kick and Widow's Wine stay in the rift. And stamina up always stays out just outside Easy Street, as you've seen. We zapped it open earlier. And Quick Revive will always spawn in the spawn room. All right, so we're gonna go up now. We're gonna open the first district, preferably the one that has jo um, jo jug in it or the mystery box, whatever you want. But first, we're gonna end this round because we don't even have enough points yet to actually open the district. All right, now what you're gonna do in round two, if you've got the double points, like I said earlier, would be best. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you wanna, you wanna wait for all the zombies to spawn in, right? And then once they all spawn in, you wanna grab the double points and just shoot them, knife them, whatever you do, right? Now try your best to keep one zombie. If you can't see more than two zombies, then always keep the last one. But if it's still double points, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, is just rebuild barriers while you have it, because remember, this tri th this, these tips will work a lot better if you save your points and just get as much as you possibly can. Right, so we have the dual points and we're going to go knife these people and you know, shoot them. And we're going to try to get as much point, points as possible. Alright, remember, I just got another double points there. This trick will work without that. You don't need a second one. You don't even need the first dual points, but make things a lot quicker. Right, we're going to go another zombie. And well, as you can see, um, start rebuilding barriers gonna get you a good few points if there's only one zombie left and you still have double points. So you wanna go you wanna max your points out as best you can. And now we're gonna go to the first district and start our second ritual. Alright, 
All right, now, so I'm just looking for the mystery box here because as I said, the best thing is to start off with mystery box or jug. All right, so in this district, which is the waterfront, you want to run down, run down here and open the first gate up here. Don't use any um, beast modes yet. You want to go over and then use this beast mode and you want to quickly turn up here and grapple hook onto this little fire escape. You want to smash this box down, run or just jump and then go get to here. You want to run down here to where the boxer's gym are, is and then you want to smash the door right there. And you want to run back up as fast as you can. If you do this quick enough, you might be able to open the rift as well. So you literally want to run down here, jump over the thing. Oh, I missed it there, but you can do it. It's possible. Then smack the rift, rift, rift open. Then you want to go and get the gate key. Shake now, you, you might have noticed here, but I have not opened the perk in this district. You can do it, but this is a tutorial for pack punch, not all perks. So you can do that separately, but technically you just go over. You can grab a look on and zap the thing to make the stairs open, or you can just zap the stairs from the bottom. But anyway, I'm now going to go up and do the second ritual in the boxer's gym. As you can see, we're, all, we're already on our second ritual and it's only round two, so this trick really does work. Alright, now the rituals can get quite tight, and the Margua is going to spawn after your second ritual. The Margua will spawn after your second and, and fourth ritual. Every time you do two rituals, the Margua will spawn. When you complete the final pack punch ritual, the Margua will spawn. And about every six or seven rounds, the Margua will also spawn. So you need to get good at fighting these things. So the best way to start is by this tutorial. Because you can use it to get um, some of these um, rituals done quite fast. And then you can, you can go and kill the Margua and keep on practicing. If you die, you can just restart. As you've seen, this has only taken me about six minutes just to get this Margua already. So yeah, practice killing the Marguas because you're going to need to because they can get pretty tough on high rounds. But I always avoid and um, try kill the Mar don't kill the Margua until you've only got like two or three zombies left because it makes it a lot easier. And it's also harder to kill Marguas when there's a runner. So just end the round if there is because you should eventually get quite quick. Now as you see I downed here. Yeah, I wasn't really meant to down but if you down it doesn't matter. That's what quick revives for. It keeps you alive. And yeah, as you can see, the Maragua, and any time you die, he'll just stand on a wall looking kind of stupid. Anyway, alright, so I'm gonna try to kill him here. Yeah, I didn't get a very good shot there. But technically, yeah, if you don't know how to kill a Maragua, which you probably do, technically all you do is he has three, he has three um, mouths, and inside his mouths are these little goo, little, yeah, yellow goo balls. And technically, when he opens his mouth, you have to shoot the goo balls, and every time you do, a little like wasp will fly up, and that can shoot goo at you, which can, can kind of annoy you. I advise kill the wasps. When I first started, I didn't kill the wasps, and they were kind of annoying, so I would. And they even have their own round. But anyway, you always get a drop whenever you kill this guy. And you'll get this power called a Margot heart, as you can see over there. Alright, it's flashing now because I didn't pick it up yet. But um, technically, that's for the Apothecary Servant. Go pick it up. It's the first power, and the Apothecary Servant is the wonder weapon in this map. It's great. What it does is, it's a bit like a big worm gun that shoots a black hole that sucks all the zombies into it. It's great. We might be bringing out another tutorial on how to do that. But um, for now, I'll just tell you, just pick up that first part. The first part is just by killing the Margot. Alright, so the second... Uh, I mean... The Second district for the third ritual, we go to Juggernaut. Alright, so what we're going to do is open the gate here to the next district. Run down, and this is the Footlight district. We want to run down and open the gate into the main area of the Footlight. Once in here, you want to run over to the stone in the middle over here. You want to run and up with the burlesque. You want to shoot your thing up there, grapple hook. Zap this thing, then turn to your left and grapple hook onto this building over here. Then we're going to turn left down here and jump off this little crate thing and smash this box. Then if you want, you can jump back and turn on the perk machine. I always like doing this. Once you do that, run down the stairs and turn on the stairs as well. To get up to the perk machine. Now Juggernaut is open, you can get it if you want and then maybe have a pack yeah, and maybe have a pack one weapon by like round six or something. Step. This tutorial is for getting it by round five, so I'm not gonna go pick up my perk. I'm gonna oh, keep it. I know what this just sit in there. I'm gonna pick it up later. Right now we're, we're going to kill these two gatekeepers while trying to keep the zombie because as I said you want to keep the round as low as possible when you can and it's going to be harder to do the rituals when like um, there's loads of zombies so you want to keep only like one. Now as you can see here when you have a runner left it can be quite hard to actually aim for the right thing and I nearly died here but I, I somehow survived. Anyway so you're going to kill this gatekeeper and you want to run into the ritual room into the burlesque. And the shadow man or whatever is going to talk to you for a little bit. You go over and you place the thing on the ritual thing, and then it starts the ritual. Now, 
normally with the rituals you don't really you really just want to train around you don't really want to kill the gatekeepers but if they're in your way always kill them now remember they only give you 10 points and sometimes they give you 20 points when the rounds go higher so remember just train around kill them if you're in your way and also i advise buying that star and going in the first room where the one i'm holding right now is actually quite decent and it would it will help you especially for killing margwas like like you're hardly gonna do that with your starting pistol like you can do it but it just takes a while and it can be harder all right so now we've got that we got the third gate room we're gonna go for the last one but we don't have enough points yet so what we're gonna do is leave that insta kill because we don't want it yet we're gonna go over and we're gonna see what we can do all right so i'm heading towards the last district now which is the canals and the ritual room is called the rabid ruby the, the, the shadow man tells you all this stuff so you'll you'll know when you do it but anyway we're gonna run over here now and i'm pretty sure i seen earlier that speed is down this way speed cola now it changes every time so of course it's not going to be here every single time but first i want to run over and grab quick revive because as you've seen i lost it earlier and just for safety i think i would advise you just to keep buying it every time oh you lose boy. it no, as you like get better, you don't lose it. <laughs> I normally don't, but I made a mistake last round. And yeah, so I don't have enough of the door here, so I gotta I just have to kill right the zombies you. to end the round. Now, as you can see, it's only round oh, three, and I'm literally, like, I'm on my last ritual. So I did tell you at the beginning of this you video that you can do, you can get all the rituals by round three. But you can't, I don't think you can actually get a pack punch weapon by this round. You might be, there's probably some tutorial out there. This tutorial is just for getting pack punch weapon by round five. But anyway, if with a little bit of practice, and if you use your beast mode as well, as I showed you at the very beginning, it can be kind of hard, but if you work hard, you'll be able to do it. Um, you will be able to get all the rituals going by round three. Now, um, I'm not sure about you or anything, but I know this is a very good achievement. It can be quite hard to do all these rituals, you know? And it can be a real pain when you don't know how to, where all the parts are and how to do them. So, if you find rituals hard, this tutorial is right for you. Also, when the rounds start going up like this, I wouldn't advise to knife like I just did here. Because what I notice is, Treyarch probably put this in as a joke, to stop you from getting good points. But whenever, but whenever I knife like this on a higher round, well not even a higher round, but after I've done most of the rituals, I always get a nuke. I don't know why, I'm not sure if that happens for other people, but it happens to me. And it, see, just there, if I knife there, I would have accidentally picked up the nuke. And I think they're trying to minimise your points so you can't get all the rituals done as early as possible. Oh, funny old chair. They think we'll laugh their jokes, even though we absolutely hate them. Well, not hate Treyarch, but hate their jokes. Alright, so yeah, you don't want to pick up a nuke, so I wouldn't advise to even knife them anymore, just in case. Now, you're going to want to go over, pick up this stone, and you want to walk over as fast as you can. You want to smack this thing under here, then smack the door to the rift. You're then going to run over here to your left, don't go up the stairs, walk through this thing, zap the um, thing of a jig, then you run back and you run up the stairs, and you turn, you look up and you grapple hook up to here to the rabbit ruby. Then you want to run through the little thing broken in the gate, run down the stairs through the back, and then zap this thing. Now you've nearly got the whole district open apart from one thing. The one thing you didn't open, I'm not sure if you saw it there, you've seen it for a split second, is a little crate. This crate has like a, I don't know what you'd call it, oh yeah, pick up the parrot as well, but this crate that I was telling you about, it has like, um, it's like the stone inside it, and it's for pack to punching or upgrading the swords, technically you get this egg and you have to put it in there and get a load of kills around it, so um, yeah, that's all that is, you don't really need it open yet because you're not doing the swords, you might also in the future have another tutorial on that, you never know. And now I'm just going to try to get some points because I do not have enough to open that door. There's another door you actually need to open to get up to the ritual room. Luckily we're in beast good. mode, you can just grab a look up there. I also noticed with the beast modes is um, at the beginning when you're playing solo, you can use nearly about three beast modes per round. After you've done two or three rituals, you can only use one per round. And when you're playing like multiplayer or like local split screen, you also can only use one per round each player. And this can be a bit of a pain, and this tutorial isn't really good for like two player, it's really only good for solo. Like you could still do it quite early for, with two people, like you could get everything maybe open with two people, but you won't be able to get a pack once weapon by round five with two people. I'm pretty sure there, there might be a way, maybe it hasn't been found yet. But I know that I've tried and I, I don't think it's possible just yet. Alright, so now that I have enough to open the, the door to the Rabbit Ruby, I'm going to go over and open that now. And I already picked up the piece earlier, so we should be all good in the hood for the last ritual. 
Now remember, a Margoal is going to spawn here after, because I told you every two rituals a Margoal spawn. Now as you can see from earlier in this video, Margoals can be pretty annoying. So literally all you need to do is keep on practicing and eventually you'll get them. Now we're going to run up to the ritual place in the Rabbit Ruby and we're going to start the ritual. This is the final ritual and we're only on round 3. So as you can see, this tutorial is quite good if you want to get all the rituals done quite on an early round. So all I'm going to do here is finish the ritual on a Maragua will spawn, as I explained earlier. So literally you just want to kill the Maragua and then once you've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to head to the rift and we're going to complete the final ritual. Now if you go to the rift before doing all the rituals, this, there's like this brick wall that has these symbols on it and they light up when you do all the rituals. If you don't do all the rituals, it won't be lit up and the door won't open so you can't go into the final room until you do all these rituals. But you can still go into the rift and there's two perks there, Mew Kick and Widow's Wine. Mew Kick is one from the older games where it technically lets you carry an extra weapon and Widow's Wine technically gives you these special grenades where you throw them and they shoot like webs. And they can also give you, if a zombie hits, goes to swipe you, you will like survive it, like spray loads of webs on the zombie. Like a little bit of an impact grenade on yourself. But anyway, now I'm just going to train the zombie so I can go kill this Margua because, as I said earlier, it can be kind of hard to kill the Margua while there's a runner. So I'm just going to go kill the runner and end the round because the Margua shouldn't take me too long because, of course, I have experience with these things. And so hopefully I'm going to get this done before the round starts filling in with loads of zombies. Right, so I got two heads already, one to go. Remember, these wasps can really annoy you, so just be careful with the wasps. I used to never kill them, I would advise do it as early as possible. And I'm going to pick up this gun over here called the Kuda. It's really good and I advise it for any of you out there. Like, in multiplayer and, and especially for killing Maragos, it's pretty good. And since you can customise your wall weapons in this, it, it can be even better. Put like stuff like fast mags and, on it, all, and all on it and it would be really good. Alright, so I killed the Maragon and I'm going to get a nuke because I don't really mind because it's only the, the beginning of the round so the round won't end. And I should still have enough points for pack punch if I'm lucky. So I'm going to go down, head to the rift. I think there's about two or three doors that we opened earlier in this tutorial to the rift so just go through one of them. Four gatekeepers are going to spawn your very first time going to the rift. And that wall over there with the symbols was the one I was talking about earlier. And technically that's where pack punch is. Um, I'm not looking at it right now, but if you do look at it, it technically explodes and this room comes up. You want to go to your left or right or put and put the gate rooms on the pedestals. Then the walls that are all cracked over there are going to fill in and you're going to be able to wall run along them. Now what you want to do is, is wall run along them once you, do, once you place the two gate rooms there. And you go into the middle and there's going to be two more pedestals. You place your last two gate rooms on it. And it's going to build a little bit more of a bridge. And it, as you can see there, that's actually where the pack punch is, but it's not unlocked yet. But you want to run over here, jump, and then go over to the table. where the gate, where, And you want to place the gate key on it. Because the gate key is going to start the final ritual. And the final ritual, technically, all this crazy music is going to come on. And all you have to do is survive. And then pack punch should open. Just as pack punch open, the shadow man is going to come and talk to you because, you see, opening pack punch is the very first step in the Shadows of Evil Easter Egg. Maybe, I don't know, in the future we might do a tutorial on that, you never really know. But um, with, with the shadow man, he's t basically just going to talk to you but and then he's going to say like that you're not free yet but like you can continue or something. I'm not really sure exactly what he says, but just before he like despawns, he, this weird crown appears on his head. And then once he does despawn, he will spawn a Maragua right where he was standing and then you have to kill the Maragua of course. Now you might think this Maragua is a bit annoying but it's actually quite good because it means you'll definitely be able to get quick points so you'll be able to get pack a bunch a bit earlier. Remember you get 500 points for each head you kill on the Maragua so Maraguas can be really good. Now I'm not sure if you saw there but the Maragua just spawned to my left and it just um, teleported over here. So I'm just going to train around for a minute until I get ready to kill him because I don't, I used to, what I, what I would do was I'd try kill him straight away and then keep walking backwards while I was trying to shoot him and then if his mouth closes and I miss him then he'll always corner me. So be careful when you're like killing the Maraguas, even if you know the map really well you can still get cornered alright. And also speaking of um, being good at zombies or knowing the map well. Also, on a low round, just because the zombies aren't powerful, don't think that you can do whatever you want. They still can kill you. Like, uh, I know I have experience from other maps, like, 
stuff where like you're on like round two and you you think like you're the best and all well not really i think everyone thinks like this and what will happen is you'll end up getting trapped and then you'll go down accidentally i know there's probably some other videos on youtube of some youtubers talking about this but yeah just be careful on those low rounds or no matter how well you know the map you can still go down all right so i got double points here again this double point isn't crucial to the tutorial but since you get at least one drop every round, you probably will get at least one double point through this tutorial. So yeah, the double points will help you out. As soon as you get double points, try to get as most kills as possible. And over here, you see I'm looking at this portal. It's a little Easter egg thing, and if you hold square or X, depending on what you're playing on, PlayStation or Xbox, right next to it over there, you get this really big commentary from Maxis talking about the Shadows of Evil characters' fates. It's a really cool little Easter egg, and you should check it out. Um, I'm not really gonna, we're not gonna do another video on that because it's really quite short, and I literally just explained the whole thing there. All you have to do is walk over to the end of the train, hold Square or X, depending if you're playing on PlayStation or Xbox, and then you've got it. Now, as you see here, I I am just pack a punching, and it is still round five. So that is it. You are gonna get your pack punch weapon, all the rituals done, all by round five. And as you can see, it has the Mob of the Dead camo, and it's a bit, it's kind of obvious if you think about it, because this map is meant to be linked with Mob of the Dead. So, yeah, guys, that is how you get Pack Punch by Round 5 on Shadows of Evil. Thank you guys for watching, this has been GTG, and I'm out. I'm out also. Thanks for watching.